Hello everybody. I got this short guy right here. He looks really tall in video, but not really. <laughs> Thanks a lot, James. Good to see you, brother. All right, bro. Marty, take it air What's the wide angle? Okay, what's the pike story? The pike stories were in Canada fishing. Edmund Lake Lodge. 150,000 acre lake. There's only 20 people a week fish there. Wow. Fly in one weekend, fly out the next, bring in more. Memorial Day to Labor Day. So you can fish some pockets and some bays. Somebody might have had a fish in two or three years. So I'm fishing with a guy, and I'm in the middle of the boat, and the guy's in the back, and he catches a nice pike. So I'm reeling my bait the other way, and I just kind of flip it over here behind us, and I'm watching him catch it. After he fights it and hits it in, I look and I start to reel my bait in behind me. And I look, and it looks like the mouth of a German shepherd. Ate it. <laughs> wow. So right there. Right there. So I hit the spool. And let him run away a little bit. And I set the hook. 52 inch pike. Wow. Just like that fast. Oh my god. He's a 100 pound braid, so he got out there and I set the hook on him, caught him in. And that's it. 52. 52 inch. <laughs> that's a true story. Uh, I believe it. Witnesses. I believe it. All righty then. Yeah, How's it going? Yeah. What's up? Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Bill Frazier, North Carolina BASS Conservation Director. Eddie Yaya, Barstow Bass Club, North Carolina. Uh, these guys earlier, they were telling me about all that's involved with keeping the, the fish alive uh, during the weigh-ins for the Bassmaster Classic. I mean, what do these guys have to do? Well, you know, normally it's a pretty straightforward issue if they drive in with their boats. The fish have been uh, treated at the, at the ramp when they come out of the water, and they basically just pull up the stage, take them out in the mesh bag that they're already in, take them to the weigh-in, dump them out, weigh them, put them back in down the, the podium where somebody like me will be catching them in a big Rubbermaid uh, tote. And then we trolley them out from under the stage, put them in a water truck, and take them back to the lake. Okay? This year it's not going to happen like that. Yeah, this year is a big production. How yeah. far away is the lake from where the weigh-in is? It's going to be about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute drive back to Minute Maid Park for the weigh-in. Wow. The lake. Um, they're coming off the lake. First flight's at 320, I think. Right. They're not expecting boats back here until 430, quarter to five-ish to start weigh-ins. And, and with the venue of the weigh-in this year, it's going to be a bigger production because we've got to get the trucks in, get the fish out, and the distances and the way we're having to go about it because of some of the restrictions <laughs> of the park are going to make it I a, heard a that, really uh, big production. When it's at Minute Maid Park, yes. it's like a baseball field. Yes. And there's uh, grass, obviously, on a baseball field, and you're not allowed to touch the grass. Not, not allowed, allowed to, to touch, touch the, the grass. grass. They've got a game three days after this thing ends, and they've... they've Pretty much wow. straight everyone's Now lodge. what, there's a bunch of people in the stadium? <laughs> there's going to sure. be people Someone in the Someone rolls in, yep. weighs the fish? Yep. Basically okay. what's going to happen is when they roll in, they're going to get put the fish out of the live wells into the mesh bags. They're going to um, then drive into the stadium um, to big fanfare. Wow. They'll get out of their boat, come across a bridge so they don't step on the grass. <laughs> they will uh, weigh the fish, they'll dump them to Bill under the stage. They'll be trolleyed out of there, taken to a tank where they're put back in water. They put water in another way bag, put the big bag in it, take them across the infield, put them back in the boat and slide well, take them out of the stadium, and then we get them back into a DNR truck and go back to the trip. What, is, what kind of uh, mortality rate would you realistically look for? It, as long as we're able to follow the guidelines for controlling the fish care, we're good. The water temperature is a little warmer, so they're going to have to put ice on them. Okay, and, and the trick there is you don't want to cool them down too much, too fast, or they go into shock. So there will be people with thermometers that will be controlling that temperature versus normally in a Bassmasters Classic, it's cool enough yeah. that it's it's not going to make any difference. I think yeah. they said the water temperatures were like 70, 78. 70, 75, you know, I think. Wow. You know, the last couple of classics, they've had more problems of getting ice out of the live wells than they have to put them in. <laughs> Yeah, Two wow. years ago in Greenville, we had boats frozen to the bunks on our trailers. So, they couldn't launch them. Yeah, they absolutely. almost had to call off day oh one. It yeah, it's a, a little different scenario. Wow. So you guys are looking to hopefully have no fish killed during this. That's that is the goal. always the goal. I mean, you know, and we, we actually have cool. a remarkable record um, in, in previous tournaments, but there's going to be stations set up along the way where the fish will be resuscitated. And it'll be kind of like a conveyor belt or an assembly line, making sure that those are fish are handled properly in every step of the process. We had a meeting at nine o'clock this morning. We've been through it. We're meeting at 2.30 this afternoon. We're gonna walk it through. I mean, this will be like 
any other professional event. These people right. are very serious about their fish care, and they're going to make sure they get them back to the lake alive. Now that's that's pretty awesome to hear because you know if it weren't for those fish, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. I think everybody would be amazed in the end analysis of how many fish are lost. I would really be surprised. We've got Dave Terry with Texas Wildlife here. Dave has an incredible reputation. He's probably one of the top in the business. My counterpart in the state of Texas, Tim Cook. These guys have been doing things like Toyota Big Bass Classic, these giant tournaments down here for years. They know how to handle fish. So basically all we've got to do is just kind of follow their lead and make sure we get the steps in there and not miss it. That's where you lose fish is when somebody makes a mistake. We don't want to make any mistakes. Well, thank you guys for yeah, taking Yeah, sure. The... It's great to meet you, man. <laughs> it's Enjoy nice it, to man. meet you guys. And you uh, thanks for taking care of the fish. Sure, That's sure. Hope. Appreciate it. Come see us. Go. You know what would really be cool? I bet you people start falling out towards the end. Hey, man. It's a pleasure to meet you, man. I watched all videos. While I was at the show, I got to meet a lot of regular folks, like myself, who just happen to love kayak fishing and are fans of my channel. I got some pretty good gifts from fans. This guy gave me a reel. I met some people that were big shots and didn't even realize it. <laughs> I also got to meet some very cool people who make a living from a kayak. You guys, uh, the kayak fish, you know this guy? What's up, y'all? <laughs> Chad? Got a little YouTube channel. Yeah, a little, a little bit of fish. I've been fishing out of a kayak for about six months. Um, <laughs> I, I'm still trying to learn how to hold the paddle rod. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to dig too far. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you what, energy. I go to this guy's channel anytime I'm looking at some do do it yourself stuff. So here's what happens, and I'm going to be straight up with you. I've been kayak fishing now for 20 years last November, all right? And it's ironic that. <laughs> the way that he's doing things, a lot of that stuff I was doing back in the day. <laughs> but, you know, I've been blessed and I've been fortunate to be able to kind of, you know, uh, work out some great deals and, and, and be blessed to have relationships with great companies. So a lot of the stuff that we didn't have back when we started, I used to call myself Home Depot Aisle 7 because that's where I'd go get my PVC. <laughs> and like all that, all that stuff he's doing now to show you guys how to do it, you didn't have any choice back in the day. After I saw his channel, you know, doing really well, I was like, oh my God, why did I not do that? Most people don't think about the fact that you can save money. They just realize, oh, this is my option. This is what I want to do. But I don't think it's even as much about just saving the money. It's about taking an idea from in here and like figuring out a way to solve a problem and bringing it to life. And there's a certain sense of gratification. There's a certain sense of pride. And so it's awesome to see that this guy's out there crushing it and showing you guys how to make it yourself. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to do some DIY videos myself this year, and believe it or not, this is the first time we've met, yep. and I'm legitimately going to do some DIY videos and say, if you want to see more DIY creations, head over to his channel. So anyway, if you want to learn more about kayak fishing and you want to, you know, you want to see that, that kind of that, that twinkle in the eye, I still feel like I have it, but a lot of guys that have been doing it as long as I have kind of have lost it. That's what, that's what I love about this guy's channel. There's still that like that twinkle that 10 year old kid hopped up on mountain dew that gets <laughs> jacked up and excited every time he goes every fishing time. so anyway thanks for watching this guy's channel thanks for getting into kayak fishing because if you're a kayak fisherman i don't care if you're paddling a pelican a wilderness systems a hobie uh inner tube get out there <laughs> it doesn't matter what you spend so if, if i can take a second yes. there's something that comes up on my channel all the time and there's hey man what's the best kayak i can get for this price all right and nine times out of ten Somebody jumps in and says, no, 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 don't do that. Save your money, right? Mm -hmm. And buy a better kayak later. I'm gonna tell you, don't do that. And here's why. If you can get three months worth of fishing. Yeah, that's worth a lot of money. That's worth, the, actually it's priceless because you can never go back and fish yesterday, okay? You can't. And you can't go back and get more days, right? We got a finite number of those on our schedule. We're done. After, after one falls off the calendar, there's no flip back. Wow. So don't save your money. Take whatever money you've got, invest it in a kayak, go out and spend time on the water, experience it, fall in love with it, and if you want to upgrade later, upgrade later. But don't sit around and wait until you've got all the money you need to get the best possible boat. The best possible boat is the one you can afford right now and go and fishing tomorrow. So anyway, I can't don't say listen it. to I that crowd. <laughs> I can't say it any better. Chad, that's an awesome message. And make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button on this guy's channel, subscribe and like follow everything he does. Serial watch his stuff. Go eat dinner and come back and watch it some more. I do. Yeah, and I'm gonna watch some of his videos. You know? 
this guy, Greg Blanchard, and Fluke Master are about maybe one or two other shooting channels because I like to blow stuff up too. It's about the only YouTube <laughs> I actually watch. So wow. there you go. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Meeting folks like Chad was very cool, but I gotta tell you, for the 11 hours I was there the first day, meeting regular fans was probably my favorite part. All day long, people came up to share stories and shake my hand. I signed a few autographs, actually. <laughs> it was an incredible experience, and some people made me feel very welcome. <laughs> oh, look at this. All right, enjoy, Cheers. Martin. Cheers, man. <laughs> Let's go. Oh. I got some. <laughs> I got some good fans, man. Thank you. And this was definitely an epic show. There were bikes here built by Paul Tuttle. There were really fancy boats. There were live feeds of the event, so that people could watch what was going on. And of course, lots of glittery boats. <laughs> Something about bass boats, I don't know. They sure love that glitter. I must say, I was taken away by it myself. These boats are really nice. Once again, I was blown away by what big business fishing really is. All the big names were there. A bunch of them were representing with really fancy cars pulling boats with really nice motors. Of course the motor manufacturers were there too. These things were no joke. I like that guy was just saying their rigs were really nice. Recognize some of those big names? Be nice to pull a kayak with one of those trucks, huh? Mm, maybe someday. Of course, they had tackle here too, enough for the biggest addict. I feel bad for the guys that had to set up this booth. That is a lot of tackle. Of course, they had enough five-gallon buckets here to make even Jeff Maggio, the Lunker Dog, happy. Plano boxes for the biggest tackle junkie. Reels for every kind of fisherman. Even salts like me. And all the time, you could watch the leaderboard to see which of your favorite anglers was making their way towards the top. Fortunately, on Saturday, I had to get out of here. Pelican had booked my flight, and I had to go. On the way out, though, I made a couple deals. Dude, all right, well, hook me up, dude. Hit up with, this guy lives right by you. Okay. He's got 100 plus thousand followers on, uh, on YouTube. We're gonna do some collaboration stuff. And, uh, so I'll tell you what Valerie does, and we can all work together down the road. Okay, I'll awesome. definitely be in contact. Be safe, man. I heard Kelly got the mission. Yes, he did. And here's what else. Here's what else. I put a bug in Kelly's ear yesterday, and I said, if you can get him to the national championship, I'll pay for everything when he's there. So keep your schedule schedule open because if they call you and want you to come there and represent them. I'm giving him a free booth if you'll come and then you can cover the event for me, give me some exposure on your channel, and everybody wins. Okay. That's what it's all about. Rubbing elbows, making deals, meeting fans. I'm kind of liking these expos. And of course, while I was here, I got to meet somebody that uh, I had met in the past. Somebody you guys might recognize. There he is. Hey, Marty. You guys remember the guy I gave the uh, kayak to? I'm glad you came here, Patrick. Oh man, I came here to support you, bud, and see Ooh. you. And Give me a ride back to the airport? I'm your Uber today, buddy. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's a, drove two and a half hours to Uber you. <laughs> man, that is a good deal. <clears throat> Patrick had been at the show earlier, and uh, we got to meet before he came and picked me up. Then we stopped and had a little something to eat before he dropped me off. 
Then it was back through security, getting on a plane, and starting to edit all the footage that I got. Flight back to Florida was nice and smooth. I hope you guys enjoy these looks into the fishing expos. I should be going to more in the future. And if I'm to have a job, this is about the coolest job I could possibly imagine. That being said though, it is good to be home. And it's nice to have friends like this who will pick me up from the airport. Yes. Back in Tampa, I was watching the sun go down. And my mind was already back on the water. It was really nice, of course, that I live on the water. And it looked like some of my friends had missed me. It was good to be home. <laughs>